Hi guys, how are you? Hello. We're doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. So uh, with a movie like Unidentified Objects, it's it's so kind of interesting how it marries the idea of like these weird dream sequences with just what is typical of like a road trip movie at the same time. And I kind of liked how it went back and forth. And so for both of you, what was kind of the joy of, I know you filmed it in the pandemic, what was the joy of like being on this road trip movie in the midst of like the world being completely shut down, but you two getting to go on this adventure? I mean, it was such a pleasure. We were one of the first films to get greenlit um, during the pandemic. So, you know, with everything shut down and us going to run to the middle of nowhere to make a movie, it was like, this is risky, but it's also um, super exciting. We, you know, we, we definitely kept the protocols super, super serious at the time. It was like, you didn't even know if you, you know, stood next to someone, if you were going to get it. Like it, it felt very um, nerve wracking because there was just so much information floating around the world and no idea of what actually was true or not. Um, I still feel that way. It's like, are we wearing masks? Are we not? Like, what are we doing? And we even kind of touched on it in the film a little bit because these characters come from such different, like, um, social and political backgrounds um, mm-hmm. you know one's a really free spirit and the other one is definitely more curmudgeon like blocking himself from from the rest of the world and um, I feel like it was perfect timing for us um, we got to socialize we got to be with people so and we got to be outside it was a privilege yeah <clears throat> and and to that point I, I mean I don't I, we don't Sarah and I don't really talk about a lot of this um aspect, the COVID aspect in, in Q and A's, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, um, a, an important point. We went, um, all in on this. This was like, you know, at the poker table, you have this card, you know, this, this, this pair of cards and, and it's just like this, that's the moment where you put all of the chips on the table Mm -hmm. and you risk it all. And I mean that to say, um, there was no like hiatus if someone in the crew or cast got COVID. Uh, we didn't have the funds to pause right shooting the way Batman did when 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 uh, when when they when they paused around the same time we were shooting. Um, so the further we got into the story, the more heightened it felt that if it, because we were tested three times a week, and so if at any point one of those tests came back positive because of the restrictions at that time, like we would have had to completely shut down according to SAG uh, regulations. And that would have been it. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been all of our chips, like gone to the ether. And um, it's terrifying if, if you think about that and, and kind of wholly um, unique in, in, in the context of, of shooting during the pandemic. Um, I'm obviously very grateful that we, we're in this COVID bubble in the middle of Maine and, and we all made it through, but uh, like it, it, an extraordinary risk was taken on all sides from the investors to the crew, to the cast. Um, but, you know, that's when you, that's what happens when you have a story that, you know, you're like, I just want to make this and we're just going to see what happens. Side note, I love your posters in silo <laughs> and Davis is amazing. Oscar My favorite. Adams breakout role is incredible. And sing, did you see Sing Street at the workshop? I didn't get to see it. My th- that's my roommates, and she saw it and got this. But I liked the movie, so we okay, just cool. have them hung up there. Love it, love it. Thank you. And um, but like, it was so funny because I I live in New York, and I when at the end, uh, Matthew, when you when you have the mask on on the train, I was like, oh wow, yeah. this is a while ago because no one else wears. <laughs> I was like, I'm still masked, but no one else is, and I was like, yeah. This is this is yeah. We shot we shot that was December 2020. So very much uh, in in the heart of of all of it. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But you guys, my favorite one of my favorite parts of this whole movie is like when the car breaks down, and uh, because I love Fun Home. So the minute I saw Roberta, I was like, Yay! (laughs) I love when they get to interact with other people is very very funny, Um, and shows kind of like where they are as individuals on this trip together trying to figure out like their own relationship with everything around them and so for both of you what was kind of your favorite part of like that road trip aspect in a story that has those outlet out those more outlandish things I mean in that particular scene that you're talking about I mean Roberta Collins is the she's the best 
Um, she was so funny and so perfect for that moment. And that is the moment that I think, you know, these two characters that we're, we're not really sure if, if they're going to survive each other. Um, there's a moment of hope in their relationship when one of them stands up for the other one for the first time um like the first significant time and it it really hit me to see that because that day that we shot um was so difficult and so um arduous there was just like there were just cars coming by us um basically Matthew says like with what the fuck face like just like what are you doing this pink giant car in the middle of like a very kind of um you know purple state where everyone's reaction was very different to us being there um there's a girl dressed up like a space cadet like alien princess goddess and you know, roberta with her amazing mustache and dress on and like the, the whole thing was just like so bizarre for the rest of the world to witness um that that whole scene definitely meant a lot to me <laughs> yeah yeah Janet. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Maddie. No, 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 you you go. That was a great answer. No, I just like, and it's so kind of, it's one of those, I was talking to one yesterday, I was talking about how it is one of those um, out there stories, whereas like, if you feel other, you will find a connection to it. And so like, in that scene in particular, the girl who just wanted to go to the convention, I was like, that's me. I'm like, I just, I want to go <laughs> be weird at a convention and dress up and do all this stuff. But it does have such an important message for kind of audiences. And so for both of you, what is something you hope audiences take away when they get to see the movie? Um, in one of our early screenings, I think it might have been the world premiere in Toronto. <clears throat> there was a man uh, that came up to me and he said something like, um, I just want to let you know, I have felt like an alien my whole life. And watching this story was like a profoundly moving for me. And that's, you know, when I decided that I wanted to be an actor, that was kind of the be all end all of being able to tell a story and let someone know that they're not alone in the world. And um, I think a lot of people feel very lonely and isolated and for all of the different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, are, we are all aliens uh, in our own unique ways, trying to fit into this box. Um, and uh, to know that, you know, you're not alone <laughs> and, 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 and I see you, right? Um, it can be like profoundly moving for, for, for someone. And, um, I think this film and this story does a really beautiful job of of letting letting uh, letting others know that that they're not alone in the world. Yeah, that's beautiful. And also, like, just to add to it, there's um, there's this kind of unapologetic um, reality to these two people, where they are just who they are, and yet they do not fit together at all, and somehow along this journey, they find a place in each other. They find uh, a love for each other. Matthew says it's a platonic love. Um, it's, it's, you don't need romantic love to find love. And I think that mm. these two people show you that you can create love your own way and that you don't have to um, succumb to what is uh, traditional or you know, do anything that you don't want to do to find someone who loves you or find friends that care about you. And um, with everything, with like social media and everything, projecting what we're supposed to be, what's popular, what's cool. It's like you know, fuck all the noise. Just be yourself, and you'll find the people that you're meant to be with, even if you don't think at first that they are um, the people you would normally be with. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I have one minute left. So one quick question. Yeah. Sure. What was your favorite moment just with the two of you that you guys got to have? Because I love, I love road trip movies because it's so, they're like, it's two people most of the time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. My, my favorite was uh, towards the end of the film, I was basically having to cry for like four hours in a field of flowers by myself. And every time Matthew came and laid down next to me and put his head on my head, I felt uh, relieved that I wasn't just alone crying in a field of flowers. 
<laughs> that was really make special. it into the film. So that's I a know. Um, <laughs> this is now a memory. <laughs> yeah, just just crying in the field. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, I mean, there were so many. I think um, I think you know that this this film. A lot of people bill this film as a comedy. Um, it, it is in some way, but I think there's there's way more um, drama and, and gravitas to it. But I think. Um, after like weeks of of filming like pretty emotionally wrought scenes, um, Sarah did we we put this like Spanish I don't know like Bad Bunny or some someone on, um, and she just did this like dance party. We did this dance party in the parking lot in front of this beach, and it <laughs> it did feel very much like you know she I, there there's a there is a moment in in the scene in, in the mm-hmm. film where she's like dancing and that was that day and it did feel like a moment at the end of the tunnel where we were able to kind of like let loose and and dance and she was like bouncing her butt in my face and like I was, was twerking on his head twerking yeah. on my head and, <laughs> and uh, uh it was it was you know we had like a little dance off in in the uh, in the in the jeep it was it was nice it, but there was there were that was just one moment of of so many uh that was just very memorable Thank you guys for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait for more people to get to see the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye.